Good afternoon. I want to welcome everybody today, uh, International Market Centers and Design on High Point Market. Welcome you to our fall programming. Uh, today we have Rug News and Design, and the, their presentation is Walking the Market. Um, they usually go on site uh, during market and walk around and see all of the various uh, textile and rug companies and the new designs and trends that might be out. And today we have Sarah Stroh and Leslie Stroh, and they will be presenting what their finds are. Um, I'm Kimberly Porter, the Senior Programming Manager for IMC for the Las Vegas and High Point markets. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at any point. Uh, we also have more information about High Point Market, um, whether you were looking for open showrooms, which are still open for another day. Um, tomorrow is the last day of market. Uh, we have our catalog connection. We have uh, other CEU opportunities and more. And you can visit us at imchighpointmarket.com. Uh, this is CEU accredited, and for those who are joining us by Zoom today, that information will be emailed out to you as soon as possible, um, most likely within the next day or so. Um, if you miss any part of the presentation, we also are recording this, and it will be available on our YouTube channel uh, for High Point, Design on High Point Market and also on our Facebook page. Uh, so at this time, Sarah, I'll turn it to you. Thank you, Kim. Um, welcome, everybody. I am Sarah Stroh of Rug News and Design. And one of the things I, um, before we get started, my father is right here, Leslie Stroh. He has been in the um, rug industry for, um, excuse me, let me, um, he has been in the rug industry for 40 plus years, and I joined him for those who have not met us before. Um, a couple housekeeping things I just want to get through. Um, we started, if you don't know Rug News and Design, we started as a print magazine when I was born and have grown that into online, social media, and all that. But the important thing to know is you guys can actually get copies of the magazine if you go onto rugnewsanddesign.com um, and fill out a subscription. The What's nice about the hard copy is a lot of the heavy articles are in the magazine. When I say heavy, it's it really good explanation of everything that's going on. Um, and you can see it online, but it's honestly, print is amazing. Um, the other thing is, is we have been walking the markets now for 10 years. Um, and this year, for a lot of reasons, it's different. Usually we have a photographer who is at market. Mm -hmm. um, that we have come in so I can do conversations. Um, due to the pandemic, I was the only person attending from our group. Um, so I had a video and I had a microphone. And so it was a lot. We vis I visited 14 companies in three and a half days, um, much less than I normally do. However, I was very careful about the buildings I was going into, um, trying to stick to one building a day. I got to spend more time with the companies. And also, I, I was very cautious with um, everything. So there were a few companies that I missed uh, because either they weren't there or they were there, but they only had one or two staff. And when I walked by once or twice, they, that's, those few staff members were really busy. So let's get started. And the first thing I want to talk about for anybody who is selling rugs in your showroom or designer and you have to do a virtual um, virtual presentation to a client. I was suggested to buy this gizmo and it's a DJI Osmo Combo 3 and it's electronic and it moves and it, you can use it um, to walk and it stabilizes your phone so that you can talk and show off uh, the rugs or the furniture. And I was suggested this by my um, actor friends who are now doing their virtual auditions. So if you are doing a lot of presentations to your clients um, online or with your phone, this actually is a really good gizmo, still working out how to work all the parts. Um, but I just wanted to point that out. The other thing I was using, um, which made it very hard in my video presentations, was I was actually using a personal mic for uh, with lavalier. It's what they said. They're about 70 bucks. 
again, when I was doing my videos, I was holding it out to the uh, showroom person. And one of the complications we had was to, they walked away and kept talking. So we have videos available currently they're on our Facebook page. They will be on our website. But when the volume goes out, it's because one of us was not following the mic. So we're going to get started. I'm going to walk you through each um, showroom as I watch the market as well. So we have a lot to get through. Um, and if you have any questions, please pop them up. The other quick note I'm going to make about um, these pictures is they are taken by me in showrooms with showroom lighting and my iPhone 11. So lighting should be good, but if it seems a little off, um, please, please go talk to the um, company that's coming from because what I found on a lot of these beautiful colors, it just, they weren't captured great in, in, the, in the pictures as well as seeing it visually. So our first stop of the day was Tamarian. And Tamarian is known for um, their rugs out of Nepal. And some of the things that, if you don't know Tamarian, that I really like is um, they really care about their weavers. So one of the things Ryan told me about the weavers is this is the time of year a lot of their weavers will leave the, um, the compound and go home for, uh, ceremonies and weddings. However, due to the pandemic, a lot of weavers have chosen to stay on the on the campus that um, Tamarian has built and continue working. And this is because the they built a green factory in 2015 and that has really been a great compound for weavers to come in and they stay. And it's so during this pandemic, you know, they're taking all the precautions, but they've also just, they've just made their own little, it's like their own little village. So going home to their village a lot of them are not. So the weaving is going on. The problems that people, uh, companies are coming across is not as much the weaving. The weavers want to weave. It is the getting um, rugs back to the U to the U.S. Uh, freight has gone up. Um, so some things are going to have a little bit of lag time. The other thing I want to point out about Tamarian is they're working very closely with Label Step, and Label Step is a small NGO, I, I, I want to I say small, but not really. They're, they make a huge impact. Um, they are working with the weaving communities and communities around to help um, educate, feed, clothe, and 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 help those those communities. And with Tamarian working closely with them, the weavers are looked after. I can't tell you enough about how I really am impressed with what the team at Tamarian has done to care for their weavers. So. There, um, here are three of their new uh, rug collections. And excuse me, I have to pull up my notes. Um, we are looking at string theory, which is 100%, 40% real silk. It is a program line. So you are able to get it in rug sizes up to a 13 by 18 and, and custom. Then you have your Reyes, um, which is 100% Tibetan wool with a Phoenix weave knot. And one of the things about knots and all that is if you don't know knots, that's okay. Um, it's something you can ask to Mary and say, hey, why do you mention the knot count? Um, and the type of knot, they are very different. Um, again, a uh, custom option and uh, 13, up to 13 by 18 size. Then you have 100% Tibetan wool in the Warshash on the far right. And what I really wanna point out to you about these three rugs is they're all hand knotted, they are all of high quality, but look at the colorway is that you have a very contemporary with the string theory in your grays and sort of, uh, uh, grays and uh, muted browns. <clears throat> then you have your transitional, which is in the Reyes, which is an explosion of a pattern. It's it's blown up. But the that color that's a red coral, it's not in my mind really coming across very well in online. You really want to look at it with Tamarian. It, it, it is that modern burnt red, um, brownish red coral. So those colors are really quite bold. And then 
you have your your more traditional with the with the border in your war and I'm pronouncing that wrong. So and I know I'm pronouncing that wrong, but again, you're seeing those turquoise blues pop um, and your red. So these are really some of the colors that you were seeing in market. Um, now here, one of the things, these are the pictures that I took up at Tamarian showroom and I did at every showroom, I did a video and these are stills from the video because I was so involved in the video and asking questions and them explaining to me that I actually forgot to take a lot of still pictures at Tamarian. But again, notice the variety of color and texture in all of these. They, they, are, they invite you in, they're warm, they have, um, they exude the blue and blue is, has come back in the market as I was noticing, but in a very different way. I don't feel like it's too solid. It's, it's much more fluid. And one of my favorite colors is ocean blue because the ocean is always changing. And that is sort of what I've sensed in the blues um, at market. The other thing that I'd like to point out is you're gonna start seeing as we go through all the slides, this yellowish, I wanna say like a burnt sun color, um, a yellowish orange, and that's becoming a very popular color that I saw throughout the market, um, along with this orangey and the coral, the terracotta. Those were also popular colors, either very much from sort of accent colors and rugs and some popping. So you'll notice that kind of color pop up again. If you have any questions about the Tamarian rug, do, ask uh, Tamarian. Again, I do apologize for Tamarian. They have a, let me go back. They have a great video that I posted. I will be, um, that's on Facebook that talks very specifically about these rugs. Um, then we're going to move on to Kalora. Now I was unable to actually meet with Kalora because they are a Canadian based company and due to the pandemic did not, were unable to come across the border. Um, however, I did take a video of their um, showroom. It is up on Facebook for now. And one of the things I wanted to really talk about Kalora is they are in a partnership with IDA, which um, IDE, which I totally spelled wrong on my PowerPoint and I apologize profusely. Um, it's IDE, a partnership to help people experience poverty in developing countries. And this has been a foundation of the Kalora since the very beginning. And so the picture on the right is just one of um, the farmers uh, that Kalora supports. And so if you wanna learn more and you really wanna work with a business that is working to help change the world and help other countries, Kalora is a great option. Um, what we see here is that and so again, with Kalora's line, I do not know which ones were the um, new rugs and which were not. So I picked things that based off of what I liked. And here's the Antica, it's a viscose. And you're seeing the blues and you're seeing those reds popping. It, amazing, amazing color selection. Then here we have our cathedral, which was an acrylic polyester. And what I'm really impressed with this was that it is machine made as, and what I really liked about it was all of these, they were soft. They, 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 the price level is good, but you can layer them. They had, they had visual, they had warmth. And so here you're just seeing a selection of the blue, blue, gray, and gray. And what I'm finding important about this is that with, again, you're gonna see this um, variation of color through market, but I think what impressed me the most about market and seeing the rugs over time was it was like seeing everything so brand new again. Cause I don't know about you, but when was the last time you were at market? Um, for me, it felt like, you know, like 20 years ago. Um, and it was only a year ago. So here's Man uh, Maninka and um, they're both in the Maninka line and their wool. And these were beautiful. I mean, to me, just a great option from Kalora. Now, my first day, here's Be Outspoken. And I don't know if you have heard about this company. Um, she's amazing. She is embracing empowerment and equality for all globally. So her rugs are representing very much who she is. Um, they're individually painted. She's worked 
to to really build this out. It is it is a work of art for either your wall or your um, or your floor. You can walk on it. So these are three of the rugs that she's done. That one is um, each dedicated to a different strong woman in her mind, and. Um, she, one of her quotes was Abraham Lincoln said, a person is as happy as they make their mind up to be and why not choose to shine? And that's what Obama had talked about. You have each of them. So if you're looking for your client, something that is just kind of out there for a rug or really individual and, and tells a story, this is a great option. Um, what I was really impressed with, with this company was right here, she talks about how the symbol is, how it brings you together and you push outwards. This, she is on our video. So a rug like this, make no mistake, it is a high-end designer rug, but it could be an art on the wall or on the floor and it would be a talked about piece. And what I really loved about the colors here, she grew up on a farm, so she uses cow hides. Um, she sources them very well. And then she worked with a company to get the right painting project. So this is this is very much a personal piece very, as if you would buy something for your wall. I was blown away with it. Definitely check her out. Um, I think for the right client, this rug would work beautifully in. So luminaries um, always kind of surprises me. And the reason luminaries surprises me is I have never been very crazy about the cotton hand loomed rug. Not gonna lie, it's it for me, it's been something hard to talk about. However, Patricia at Luminaries does an amazing job on using fabric and layering it in the loom to make it stand out and unique. The reason why is because she's starting to do indoor outdoor rugs, which you're seeing in the reds, the fiesta this denim look. Um, so Fiesta, Mink, and Regal, They're, they are the, excuse me, the indoor outdoor rugs are a 100% spun polyester fabric. She also works with the fabric that would be used on upholstery. Um, I really could actually see these in your covered porches, kitchens, hallways, entryways. Again, it's, for me, I, don't, I wouldn't think about using a hand, <coughs> excuse me, um, a rug like this. However, her designs while are simple and very interesting. So don't, if check out Luminaries if you've never done it. So on the first day, I visited Tamarian, Kalora, Be Outspoken, and Luminaries. What I got, came away with from the first day is that there is a wide variety of price points, as we all know, but even on the price point from the high end to the low end, you can fit design anywhere. The colors I was seeing were shades of blue, that yellowy gold, and each of them had, could be actually all four of these companies, you could compare, you could put different rugs together from them. So, you know, you could have that be outspoken, empowering rug on top of a Tamarian rug or, you know, in your hall, uh, bathroom or kitchen, you use luminaries. I mean, there are a lot of options. So this was just, here are the emails, uh, the websites for you to go look at them more closely. Um, now, day two, I started out with Daylin. I have to warn, every, I, have, I like to tell people, Daylin's relationship with us is amazing. Uh, Ronnie, who you're seeing in the bottom right-hand corner, has been one of my mentors of teaching me about rugs since I joined in the in the going to market 15 years ago. Um, we have a great video with them, and it, there's a lot of banter that goes back and forth. But he, if you need, if you're new to rugs or you don't, you're still learning about how to sell them because one of the things I really learned, I think, again at this market is for for all, you, retail stores and designers, if you're doing more than rugs, you have a lot of information to take in. And I still can't remember everything about just the rugs and I've been doing it for 15 years. So I can understand how it can be overwhelming in any one of those markets. We all have our expertise and if rugs are not in it, one of them, that's fine. Ronnie and his team is a great team to help explain it. So on the left-hand side, what you're actually seeing here is the new Daylin 
tailored system and it has 20, no, but there's 20 different collections with 200 options and my numbers might be slightly off on that. But what's really great about this is it, it, it shows you um, that wrap, how easy it is to carry that in your, in your um, space. So I'm actually working with a friend right now in upstate New York who wanted a rug and I reached out to Ronnie, sent me some samples and she's taking a look at it. And it's, it's been a lot of fun doing. So one of their new lines is the Casina collection. And this is a tight plush pile, um, polypropylene and shrink polyester pile. Now, shrink polyester pile, there is a definition to it. I'm not gonna get into it now. Ronnie explained it to me in one of our videos. It will be posted on Facebook and online shortly. Um, what's important to know is it's easy to clean, mild detergent and water. There's no latex backing. So if you need a good price point rug or you need a throw rug or a bigger rug, one of the things I do talk a lot about is the latex backing. Rugs with latex backing is fine, if you have allergies, try to get, get um, rugs without latex. You want the dander and all that to fall through, not just from pets, but from humans. So here's the Casina collection. It is um, machine made with no latex backing. So always have, look at the back of a rug. It's a great way to explain how a rug is made. Um, but look at the variation of blues, okay, on the, on the left-hand side of your screen. The patterns are quite unique. This river view, which the picture is um, closed up, you can see in the upper upper corner of R Riviera, there's a there's looks like a border. There is actually a border on that pattern, but it it the way it's done is so unique that you can only see it in a certain way. Uh, it sort of a traditional pattern blown out to completely modern. I, really amazing, something that you could use. And this collection would really be good um, for, if you have a big, let's say room or somebody has a big room and they wanna layer rugs, this rug line is perfect for using at the price point. When we can have cocktail parties again, if somebody has a big expensive oriental rug, get one of these rugs, put it under the coffee table. It, they're, they're light, they're easy to move, they work with anything. And you can layer it and you can use it sort of as your drop cloth at a cocktail party under the bar. You can use it under a um, coffee table. Also a lot of companies, uh, met some people who do sh um, show, what's the word um, when you're setting up a house for showing? Uh, staging. Staging. Um, I met somebody who was talking about needing rugs for staging. This is a great option. Um, and then you're seeing the yellows and the blues here. Now, again, this is the polypropylene. It can be indoor, outdoor. Now, here's the marquee collection, um, which I rather liked. Um, it's a polypropylene pile power woven in four colors, and it is new to market. And I just, I don't know, it, it seems like it's very shaggy, but and it's plush, but it, it has a heavy feel, but it's not heavy. It's not thick. So just a great option with patterns. Um, here's the Montana collection, a personal favorite. It is 100% polyester and I like to go the fake hide. They call it the faux animal. Um, it's a fake hide, okay? My son has the zebra print. Oh my God. He has been dying for a animal hide. The cutout, all that stuff. He wanted zebra. I'm not buying a kid a real zebra rug for a million reasons. And these rugs clean so beautifully. They have a little bit of a sheen to it, but honestly on the floor, it looks amazing. Again, a great laying rug, get, can be in really big sizes, four standard sizes. I can't say enough about this Montana collection. Uh, my son has a five by eight zebra. He actually now wants a larger size in the hide and who knows, Christmas is coming. Um, now we're on to Momaney. And one of the things, that, I have to say both these rugs right here of Momaney's, I really love, I'm drawn to arts and crafts, art deco, um, the Simba um, in navy and the Simba in copper are wool, they're Indian hand tufted. The largest size is a nine by 12. This 
on your Simba navy, it is coming up black. It is a very dark blue navy. So please on this one, particularly if you're interested in it, go to Momani's site, reach out to Momani. This color is not showing as beautifully and as rich of a navy color online uh, on the computer as it is in real life. And then you have your Cooper, which the brown, the linear brown is a nice, dark, warm brown. Again, do check those two out. Um, now we're on to what is the bolder. It's 80% wool, 20% cotton, Indian handwoven, and up to nine by 12. Um, take a look if you can, and you're seeing a little bit of that, that copper color coming through in the blue. So from a distance, this, is a visually different than up close. I'm showing you the up close pictures. There is a variety of in the boulder. Take a look. Um, it is it is a nice textured layered look. Then they have here, they have Tahoe. Uh, it's 100% wool, Indian handmade. It's hand hooked from natural wool threads. Now, I, again, if you're looking at the multi right here, that com is coming out more of a copper than it is in the picture. So I'm feeling like the camera muted the colors a bit. Very interesting pattern. Then we have the Lily Han collection. And um, what I can quickly say about this is it's copper colors, light blue, um, hundred. it's a polypropylene Turkish machine made and it's new to market. Um, I really wish that I could have shown you close-ups of these. It, it Close up, it looks almost different than it does far away. A great option for machine made for high trafficked areas where you want the oriental. This blue and um, copper color, wow. It, it actually really blew me away. Um, from a distance, you could almost think that it was a hand knotted. It's not, it is machine made. Okay, now we are moving on to Kaladi. And I'm just gonna start with, if, if, I, if I had a full staff, and I didn't have a dog and a child. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of Kaladi rugs that I would love to own for myself. Um, they have a wide variety, a wide variety of, of collections, but to me, it, it's just, it's just art. Um, the Kingsley collection, which is powered loom, um, detailed hand fi finishing with acrylic and silk etty. It's up to a, a 12 by 15, a little smaller than that. But this black one, and black and gray, oh. Um, the picture you're seeing on the left is from it hanging on the wall, so the light coming down on it. It, it again, it gave me this very, um, and the Kaladi carries inventory. So right now, if you are stuck for a rug and shipping is a problem during this pandemic, Kaladi does carry a lot of their stuff in stock, so they're always a good option. This Kinsley collection, so friend of mine just bought a Frank Lloyd Wright in inspired home. Um, I love this rug and it really, maybe I was drawn to it because of that. We've been talking about it, just the lines and, but the transitional thing, I, I, ugh. I just need tons of houses. Um, so here's a, a Kinsley, some of the other options in the Kinsley, uh, rug. And I, I mean, just different patterns, but that first black one still draws me in. So here's the Toronto collection. It's a hand knotted wool and natural silk. And this is, I did take a picture of a close up, and you are going to be able to see that the pinks, that, that coral red, different shade. Um, again, I'm really not feeling that my pictures did justice to the Claudie line. It was very hard to show from a distance and the detail. You're seeing it, the two different styles right here. Um, it's in that, I want to say grunge look. I'm not 100% sure I dig it, but I definitely know that there are designers and people who love it. It would look amazing on the floor. Um, and I am kind of power throughing all these because there are 14 showrooms and timing for us to talk. So questions, ask them. Also, we will post stuff on our Facebook and Instagram. I'm trying to give you an overview. If you didn't make it to market, what was there? Um, I'm definitely leaving out tons of information. Okay, so here's Jaunty. Um, and we have the Este Estella collection, which is a wood pile hand tufted in India. Um, and uh, there's, it, 
it's really hard. I mean, again, I just, I, I, I feel like I'm not doing a great job of showing these, but this has a mixture of colors of earth, of earth colors, black, blue, brown, and, and earth. Um, and you, it, it's something you should take a closer look at. I, I, I think it would look really great with like gray rugs or like that overstuffed couch and like some pillows. Then you have the Zola collection, which, um, <laughs> let me take a picture. I, sorry, I'm also checking my notes because I can't remember all of um, the information. Uh, the Soho collection is a wood pile with accents of viscose and it's hand tufted in India. And for some reason, I am not getting my Zola description up. Johnny's. Oh yeah, and also to, something you should remember, they're not on the internet, but you can see their rugs when you sign on. They only work, um, their main, excuse me, here's me racing through and I'm forgetting to say stuff. Jaunty has made a very, a very important choice not to sell online. So you have to work with Jaunty, a dealership or the designer to see the rugs. Um, they've made a choice of this because they are supporting the brick and mortar. So any of these rugs that you're seeing, do reach out to Jaunty, get a better one. You can see them online a little bit from their website, but that doesn't mean they're selling on online. So the Zola Collection Graphite really is one that you want to see more in person. It's, it's a mute, I don't even want to use the word muted. Um, it is a variation of graphite color to give a pattern. Okay, so here we have, sorry if you're hearing the creaking of my old circular table. Um, so here we have the Stanford collection, which is, sorry, I gotta get to my notes. Um, wool and viscose blended yarn, hand woven in India. It's also available in a really nice blue and yellow. Um, and the blue would be the raised part where the gray is and the yellow is sort of underneath. Um, the Petra collection is a wool pile, multi-textured, hand tufted in India. Uh, and this one I actually really like because the way that the colors were coming through in the dye lots, you're seeing like a bluish gray, but it's sort of variation. A very, again, using the word simple, um, a simple rug, but not in the sense that there's, there's color, there's, there's pattern, but you can do a lot with it. So it's very subtle. Um, the Camden collection, which is wool pile hand motive in India. I love this, this it's a more of a bluish gray and with the brown overlay. And what I find it very interesting is you're seeing the texture and you're seeing pile, but all the rugs you've seen are really not that thick, okay? So we're getting really away from these sort of thick, and, and I'm, by thick, I mean the, what's the word, the, the, Dense. the density of a rug that one, you couldn't carry it, you couldn't fold it. You're not seeing that as much anymore. You're seeing these great layers and you're seeing carving, but the carving is maybe a centimeter, two centimeters difference. You're able to lift them up, carry them. And a lot of that, the weight has to do with the fact that well, of shipping. The weight, the weight is shipping. Uh, UPS is setting standards uh, that all the manufacturers have to meet, such as the width of the rug, once it's over eight feet, there's a surcharge. Once it's over 70 pounds, there's a surcharge. So everybody's redesigning their rugs in order to drop ship it. So particularly at the lower price points, um, the rugs are fantastically designed, but they're also designed to be drop shipped. And that's driving a lot of the technical change that's taking place in the rug business right at the moment. The actual and brilliant production uh, engineer is doing this. So, okay, so now, so again, Jaunty had an amazing line, and I will tell you this Camden collection, this blue and, and brown right here on your right, I really did, I was drawn into it. I will say, however, anything with blue, I'm pretty much drawn to, so um, that's just my personal preference. So on to Nursen. Now, Nursen is, um, the picture you're seeing here is actually not a new one. It is uh, a one- what did we say? It's not a one of a kind. It's one of a, they make it one at a time. Yeah, it's on demand. It's on demand. I love this. It's not new to market. I just am always drawn to it. And it was displaying beautifully at Nurison. So here's Nurison's Twilight Collection. Um, 
It is a New Zealand wool and bamboo linen. It's hand knotted. Oh my God, super soft to touch. I mean, you can almost wrap yourself up in it. Um, it's, uh, it's a low pile, low shed rug, has a modern wool linen, uh, linen ran blend. It is, it's gorgeous. Um, and notice you're seeing sort of an, in a traditional lattice work and then a very graphic look. Then over here we have the, um, there it's no, well, it's a twilight collection. So this is another of the twilight collection and the Navy. So here's just in the Twilight collection alone, a variety of, um, it, excuse me, I actually read the wrong, my, the wrong note. It's 40% New Zealand wool and 60% Lux Celia. It's their version, version of Rand. And, um, it's a subtle she, uh, sheen and very great colors. Here's a variety of the Twilight collection of what you can find. On your right, the navy and gold really popped. Um, it's weird. Look, if you have clients that love this, this design of, of contemporary look, um, it, this is an amazing option. I really struggle to talk about it because I don't quite get it. Um, but as an editor, my goal is to collect all the information and share it with you, and that's what I'm doing. So I'm usually drawn more to... The traditional of like to the left of twilight um with the lattice work then to this navy gold however that navy gold really was amazing it kind of made me think of looking into outer space um here we are with ocean which is the new zealand wool and bamboo linen hand knotted um divine is 31 percent new zealand wool and 69 percent Lux seal, it's hand knotted, it's a combined woven texture, texture. And then on your right hand side, what you're seeing is the divine line in two colorways with slightly different patterns. Um, really nice. A Nurison always comes out with a great with with great rugs. Um, because of the modern, modern look of these rugs, it is very hard to photograph. Okay, so the best thing I can suggest for somebody with you like this is if you have a client that you're doing a virtual learning uh, walkthrough with, do do a video camera with this. It will show up better than just showing stills. French market collection. Here is just what Peggy had in her showroom. I had started to do an interview with her and then a uh, customer came in. So we had to end it and I was unable to get back to her. Um, she has been, before the pandemic really started, she works very closely with her sources to get high quality rugs. So if you're looking for things like this, please reach out to Peggy at French Market Collection. She does have a wide variety, which I was unable to see, but I did want to mention her. Um, Oriental Weavers, which I luckily was able to get into. Oriental Weavers was not quote unquote showing at market. Um, they did have the show ribbon open for one or two appointments, and I happened to walk by when they did. Um, so here is the Strata. Uh, it is a nylon polypropylene power loomed. Um, and you're seeing two variations of the Strata, that it, this blue and then this brown. Both the colors that you will see popping up in this market, that yellowish copper burnt, and then your variation of blue. Then here you have Myers Park, which is a hide rug. Um, the textures are really interesting of how they've done it. It's new to their line. If you're into hide rugs, take a look. And then we have um, Malabar, which is uh, polyester hand loomed. Okay, this is my picture of it. And um, Again, due to lighting of the showroom and the angle it was hanging, <coughs> I couldn't pick it up too well, but it is a uh, muted color of blue and uh, pink or blue and red, so that when it's lying on the floor, it is subtle. It just gives you a hint of that traditional look. Um, very unique uh, feel to it. Definitely, you could use it in a modern home. Then you have the Maharaja collection which is a polyester powered loomed. It comes in 24 different rugs, some with borders, some without traditional patterns to transitional. And that brown, it's not showing up again well in this picture, is really warm and rich. I mean, it just, it really, so if you've ever seen a chestnut ball, 
when it breaks a chestnut shell, when it breaks open, it's really dark and brown and just exudes luxury. That's kind of what that brown really looked like in real life. Um, the caravan is, um, sorry, I've got to get my phone. Um, hmm. Did not take the note of my caravan down well. Anyway, caravan is another new line. I'm going to go with its power loomed again. Um, and what I do like here is actually uh, the yellow, that, that coppery yellow burnt sun look. Um, which was has been very popular in market. So OW really hit it on target with reaching the colors that were popular in market. So the end of day two recap was my busiest of days. As you can see, ooh, look, I even have all my numbers messed up. That's what happens when you work through the night. Um, Daylin Rug Company, Momani, Kaladi, Jaunty, Nurse, and French Market Collection on Oriental Weavers. Um, a couple of things I want to point out is that the um all of these do go to their websites do reach out if you were not at market um i will be posting videos in the about actually walking through the showrooms the videos they this all the staff really talked about them very well and i i'm one person doing my dad does the print i'm focusing on online so if it's not up over the next few days just give me some time um i want to make sure that you get all the information out of it and it's worth your while to watch those videos they are coming up some, um, so just remember, you will get to see me walk through the market. Okay, so it is 1.45. I'm on day three. We are going to go a little bit more than an hour. I'm trying to get through this as fast as possible. Um, I mean, cramming four days of showrooms into one hour is hard. Okay, so now we're at Phasey. Um, First, let me point out something about Phasey. Phasey has been hit with malware. Their website is down. So I am showing them a few more of the Phasey online collection. Um, if you need anything from Phasey, do reach out to them. They have a side site. So just go to phasey.com. It will direct you to where you can view some of them. But they have been they have been attacked. Their site, website is down. That um, And you can email them. You can call them, ask them any questions. Uh, it happened right before market, and they're doing everything they can to get you guys seeing their collection. So here we have the um, Parker uh, Parker collection. It is a machine made polyester and viscose, and it's from Turkey. Um, and I'm going to just tell you that the price point on that the Parker collection is amazing. Um, one of the things that I really like about Phasey is it has a very hot, a good range of hot, low to high. Um, it can really hit every price point, and the rugs can can totally work together. Now, what's interesting is a on your right is the Palomar collection, and it is a hand knotted wool. So, just to show you the the what I find amazing is the rug on your left. We don't normally talk about price, but I'm going to mention it here only because it just shows what a good range your Parker collection rug. A five by eight is around 300, okay? Your five by eight Palomar is around 1200. And in the pictures, you can't tell that. So again, if you're doing stuff online, you can see a lot and when you're working with clients, do know that sometimes what's in the picture in the sense of it exudes luxury, it, the price point might not be a luxurious price point like the Parker yet you can make a room and make a statement. Um, again, really liking this Parker. Uh, it makes me think of a tree, very natural. Here we are with the um, Karina, and this is hand-knotted wool Indian, and then you have the Kira, which is machine-made polypropylene and polyester. And one of the things I really like about Phasey is they put, if you look, you see a little paw print, any rug that has a paw print on it means it's pet friendly and has been checked by Cameron Capel's dogs. <laughs> I double checked on that. Yes, they have been officially checked by, by oh, not Cable, Cameron Fazy's dogs. They've been officially checked by Cameron Fazy's two dogs that it is pet friendly. Um, and then if you see the hand on the rug, which you're seeing on the Karina line, it means that it was handmade. I really actually love those tags. Because if your mindset is, oh my God, okay, I've got to deal with dogs, I got to deal with dogs, you, 
you can see which ones are drawn to. I also am really drawn to the Kira collection with on the bottom left. It makes me feel very Asian inspired. Something I want to point out too about having pets, which I've learned one because I have a puppy again. Really, if you have pets, and I'm going to say small children, but if you have pets, my suggestion in my experience is not to have a latex backing. Latex is not bad. However, pet urine, if there's latex, can settle in and you can't fully clean it. On your Kira collection like this, <coughs> there is no latex backing and it means it will pass through. So when you have to go clean up after you finish cursing that your pet, your pet urinated on your beautiful rug, you can actually clean it and get, and get out the smell. So it is something to take into consideration when working with people. Water is the best cure for this. You just wet it, wet it, wet it, and let it run and run and run. So if you catch it right away, um, just running fresh, clean water through it, put it up on a couple of metal chairs or some, anything, get it off the ground and soak it with water running through it. Let it sit in the sun and dry. Best thing for a wool. Best thing for a lot of fiber, actually. Yeah, and also the other thing I will mention is when you do have to clean around, even if it's rush, washing water through, um, lift it up and let it get underneath because most rugs have a cotton base and that's what needs to dry over the wool. If it's synthetic, you just want to do that to let everything dry. Okay, I want to just add in the Karina collection. If you look at the close-up, you're seeing that bluish gray. That's what I'm talking about, how there's these, the hues of blue are no longer a solid blue. They're sort of an ocean blue. They, they transcend from a white to a blue. It's amazing. <coughs> Excuse me. And I just want everybody to know I'm coughing because we have a fire going in the fireplace and I'm slightly allergic to uh, wood. Okay. So uh, da -da, here's, okay. And my notes are different. Okay. So here is, okay. Um, <laughs> We're going to go back for a second. Nope. Okay. So the Ezra Elton and Latham collection. Wow. They are power pieces. They are handmade. Um, they blow my mind. The colors are amazing. They're bright. They're bold. If you need a bright, if you need a bold, go check these out. Um, I mean, I, I want the blue one, of course. Um, then you have the Batia collection, which I have very badly not printed out my notes on that one. If I'm not mistaken, it is uh, machine made because I was trying to balance high end, their Phasey's high end with their price point, um, good price point. So I can't say much to that one and I apologize. Um, but you will see the grays. So here we are looking at the gray in here, and then you have that blue, and then you have this beautiful pink. And pink, this pink was popping up. It, it's, it's not in the rug, it's like an accent. So sort of like when you see that pink that just pops out of your corner of your eye, you're seeing it also in the Latham rug here and in the Ezra. So surprisingly, in some ways, you could, in a same household, have these two rugs. Oh. Um, if you're wondering about the phasey furniture, I have absolutely no idea. I'm always blown away by the chairs. I will tell you that all the chairs that I sit in in the phasey showroom are very comfortable. They do an amazing job of displaying their rugs. Okay, so here is the um, Percy collection on your left. It is prep friendly. It is machine made polyester from Turkey. Okay, the price point on these, crazy good. Um, and the reason why I'm bringing up price point and I'm not saying anything is because I think we sometimes get an assumption what a company can make and what their price points are and that you might feel that you can't afford it. And being seeing pictures online or if you're showing with your customer, I, some people walk in and say, okay, I want to spend this much. And so they, they sort of box themselves in. And you really should say, well, what are you interested in? Because here, this pet-friendly Percy collection priced really well, but you're getting these very um, new, the, the denim look, the gray, that blue, but the price is amazing. So you, again, use this as a, in a, in a big room. I mean, that you're not going to pick up your rug all the time to clean because how many people are picking up their oversized rug to clean? You should know that hand knotted rugs, anything with wool, should be considered like a man's wool suit. It does need to go to the cleaners. Saying that, that machine maids, 
do not need to be clean like handmade. So really great option if you're not the person who has full-time staff, you're not going to take it up and send it out to be clean. Look at these machine maids. Um, they're a great option for people who want to not have to worry about cleaning. Um, you know, or something with a lot of family or travels or for the second home or third home where you want to have it there and not really worry about it. Um, I'd also actually, I'm going to interrupt myself. I just had a thought. These, like the Percy collection and throughout the, throughout, um, the presentation, I've been showing a lot of machine maids that look like orientals and high-end rugs. I actually would also really suggest offering these to people who have second and third homes that are in fire zones um, because the price point is lower, but still the quality and the design is really high. So if their, their home is on the side of a mountain that is in a fire zone, like California, Montana, basically the West where I've lived, this is a great option because they can have something beautiful and they don't have to worry about it if they're at their other home about what's going on in the fire zone. Um, Sorry, sidetracked, but I think these things. Then we have the um, Elias collection, and it is a hand loom wool and viscose. Um, also, actually, a very uh, decent pri a price point. The gray, subtle gray layering texture you're seeing here, those lines are raised. Um, very soft, but not too raised that it would catch your heel or hold on any crumbs. I've Sorry, the mom in me just thinks, okay, crumbs, how many times do I have to vacuum it? This this looks gorgeous. Um, and you can see it with the chair. It's it's subtle, but gives gives good texture. Now we are at Capel. Um, Capel is from North Carolina base, but they and are known for one thing, but they've really expanded their line to to if you haven't been in Capel in a while, I would suggest maybe taking a look. So here's the Tess, Tessini collection. And I, again, I'm gonna apologize because I think I just butchered that collection name. Um, it's a wool transitional rug. It is hand knotted, 75% wool, 25% viscose. Um, pile high is a half an inch. Um, and I don't know, so, uh, to me, I. I look at rugs like this and it really makes me think, there's a few rugs that make me think that I'm looking at Google Maps in a distance. Um, very beautiful. These were rich colors of blue. And then in this one, the color of that copper and the pink were really standing out as gorgeous. Um, now, something that I, the Avanti collection right here, you're seeing in there, um, it's a hand tufted wool rug, maximum size 15 by 20. And that terracotta, red, orange was, is gorgeous. Um, and then with the blues, it, those are the two colors that I saw a lot at market and they've done a great job of, of putting it in this rug. Um, the Char Charissa collection is hundred percent wool hand knotted. And again, the brown in here was a gorgeous brown. It, it's not popping as much as I would like on the picture. Um, the border was simple. So it is sort of a true, it's, Traditional, but not traditional in the sense that they're warmer browns. Um, great, great living room rug. And then the Sheridan is a uh, hide rug. And I actually really liked it. I mean, we've seen a lot of hide rugs recently, but Capel is offering it. And they're not a great picture that I took of it. It's very hard. Um, they're strips of hide. Uh, it was very beautiful. And the reason I put these three collections together is Notice how you could you actually could work with them in the same room. Um, so a great selection of browns and, and reds. Then, oh, okay. So I want to talk about the bait. Okay, let me, I now see like two mistakes on this page. I was finishing this up at about three o'clock this morning. Um, I left market on Friday. It was the weekend. I had to deal with my kids. So I've been working nonstop. Um, and so I'm, I'm seeing a mistake in my spelling. My mistake. Um, but I want to talk about this Bayview collection because when we talk about the braided rug and, and Cameron, uh, Capel and I had this conversation. When I think braided rug, I really do think the grandma old school. Um, and I even apologize to Cameron about that. Uh, and there's that rug out there, but there's also these newer takes and Capel is showing it in their Bayview collection here with the metal, which is the upper and the lamb's wool. If you look closely, you can see sort of different braids within that. And it really changed 
how to look at a braided rug, especially this lamb's wool. I mean, it was so soft. You could wrap a baby up in it. Um, pure, uh, pure white, but not white. It, it was a warm white. Um, it's 47% wool, 27% nylon, and 26% polyester. Uh, pile height is 5, 8 inches. So really soft, easy to roll, very modern take on the uh, braided rug and the taking from the tradition of where Capel came from, I blown away. Um, I actually wouldn't mind having this in a lot of rooms. Yeah, by the way, um, pure white rugs are not common, very generally very expensive because getting uh, a lot of good white wool um, is one thing. White cotton is another. The blend here is, is interesting for the wear and usage factor. So. You've got wool and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a blend and it's designed uh, for usage, uh, particular usage. So you're seeing in this rug a very different take on the word braided. Um, very different take. And it's not a pile rug, but it's the thickness of the rug in, in total rather than the pile itself, although we still refer to it as a, as a pile height. So it's a thicker, uh, heavier rug. Um, large rug make a great bed spread. Actually, it would, and I, and I would say this: um, if you want something cozy to have your feet come off of, this is actually a really great option in a bedroom. Um, I will. I'm going to add one more thing: is that the Bayview collection does have some of the more traditional colors and the reds and the blues, but I really was looking for the modern look that really pulled me in um, to something that we a lot of us have considered the style of rug um, to be more traditional and. Uh, old school. Um, the Mara, Mar, Mar, Mara, God, I apologize. I am so butchering names. Um, is a, is a traditional hundred percent wool rug. This is in the mushroom. Um, it is a take on sort of traditional pattern blown up. It has a little bit of fringe. Um, really nice. I just, and again, actually I, one of the things I would consider doing is Having like the Marmar, this Marmar. Marmar collection, sorry, a really oversized in my room, and maybe have the Bayview lamb's wool or even the metal at, just in front of my bed. So, again, a nice layered look that I thought could go really well together from Capel. Um, I'm going to say one more thing about Capel. I have, uh, Cameron Capel and I have known each other since I, we, I, I started in the business, we joke about growing up in the business. Um, and it was really great to see her. She was at market. Um, and I really do think Capel has done, uh, has a, quite a few new lines out there that are slightly different than what they're used to. Great option. Okay, so now we're at my last rug company, um, Spiker and Co. Um, they're vintage vinyl cloth, um, specialized. Um, they came up with the process, amazing. I'm going to state that my family has used this product in our living room, our mudroom. mudroom, our kitchen. My brother has used it kayaking it. I have carried the rug with me to go camping. Um, so I, it's very hard to talk about a company, this company because basically we love it so much and I have to be fair. Um, but the artwork also to die for. So what we're seeing right here is where you see the Savage, that's a new tile one. You can actually get them custom done with your own lot sayings. You can have it big, you can have it small, you can have it with your doormat. It's great. You can have your name. You can make fun of people if you want. Um, okay, but this is where the highlight comes. So here's the Persian Bazaar. It's a totally new rug line in that vinyl. Um, and it, you, they come right now currently in three patterns, the Agra, the Camelot, and the Tabriz. Um, the colorways are amazing. It's a take on your traditional rug in a vinyl. Um, so I can pretty sure. Two things that I'm telling you about this rug. One, it's a great take on vinyl, uh, on Persian design. Two, the colors are terrible here. Um, I've seen them reproduced in print where they're more accurate. Um, we always have a problem with color when you change medium or media. Uh, we always have a problem with lighting in showrooms. Um, let me just say that this is a great line for upscale 
retail brick and mortar because it's priced uh, with good margins for everybody. Uh, it's a great, unique product. Um, they are the market leader. We've been impressed, I will say, as Sarah said, we've used it since they were in business and we've abused it since they were in business and it's held up 10 years or more. Has um, it been 10 years? Yeah. Yes, yeah, 10 years um, under, you know, fairly uh, hard wear. So um, I'm gonna jump in here and say, of all the products that we've seen this year, their ability to come out with a six by nine, eight by 10 line of um, vinyl, uh, which lays on, we, we use it because we have a floor, an antique floor here that's uneven, has to be fully restored. And it lays on that floor and lets us um, use the floor uh, without, um, stepping on actually, that. I'm going to interrupt my father. We've also used it in our patio with stone that has also needs to be redone. Um, yeah, this summer to sort of help people from tripping. So right. it, it, it it's is flexible. It's flexible and it's waterproof and it's everything we've found it to be everything they say it is. So and more because um, we use it in ways that they kind of suggest maybe not to use it, like leave it outdoors in the rainstorm. Right. And kayaking, my brother changes it after kayaking. I camp with it. What I am going to add here is I do agree that the colors here seem a little muted. Um, please, and I'm going to, I think that's the last of my si slide. So what I want, oh, no, here, here's, here's sorry, we're going to go on. Lines. Here's some of their other newer lines. The folk art um, to your right and the mosaic, um, which now that I see this, do not watch if you, if you might have a seizure because the lines are popping out at me. But amazing. They are absolutely amazing. The color option is great. So here's day three. Oh. Day three recap. I, oh no, I have two more. Shoot, I'm so sorry. I'm really trying to get through this. Phasey, Capel, and Spiker. Um, and okay, so now last day. The reason I had to go back was my day three, these guys, I had to go back. Anyway, HRI came out a year ago at market with some with a line from Sumbrella. What you are seeing is then they came out, they showed that it wine pour clean with a Clorox, Clorox it's like 10% Clorox to one, one gal a gallon, of water. gallon of water and 10% of Clorox. So very little Clorox, put it on, wipe it up. It's clean. Super amazing. Incredibly amazing. Okay. And Sunbrella is known for convertible tops and heavy use sun, um, yeah. non-fade. Sunbrella is the brand name. You're selling a brand name here. Yeah. You're using a brand name. It's a tested brand name. And it, it actually is the most sun fade resistant product out there that we know of. Right. And so like, here's a great example. I'm going to say this. They have this umbrella 600, this umbrella 700, and this umbrella 1000. The difference is the quality and the tightness. They're all great quality. However, as you go up in number, you, some, from umbrella 600 to umbrella 1000, it does change. I have a video on it. If you're interested in knowing all the technology, reach out to HRI um, because it could, uh, that's a whole, like the video I did was 20 minutes long. Um, so what I want to point out is just see the blue in this umbrella 700. So I know, because I like my blue, I have umbrella blue fabric on my patio furniture that is that same color. So I would look into this is a great patio porch, screen porch, any porch that would work with that color. Um, you're seeing that golds and coppers in this umbrella and then that. Um, here is their muted, their blues and their grays, so, uh, the thousand, which is a very fine machine point, really fine, really amazing. And if you knew nothing about rugs and you didn't look at the backside, you would honestly think it was a hand knotted rug. And it's a machine, woven, stain resistant, all that stuff. Oh, sun resistant. Sun resistant. <coughs> this black and silver one, love it. Um, I re actually really love it. It made me think of some other stuff. We are now moving on to Samad, <coughs> excuse me. And I actually need to pull up my information. Um, give me one moment. Samad is a very creative, traditional hand knotted house that is now producing not only traditional, but some very aggressively uh, contemporary 
uh, products, but they're rooted in a hand knotted uh, tradition and they've executed over the years extremely well. So one of the things I'm actually going to mention because David Samad, Samad, Samad I asked for a correction of his name, um, wanted me to mention that the Caspian collection that was known by um, Michael Cohen, the uh, Michael George. No, um, Michael. I can't. Wait, um, anyway, uh, I have it in my notes, and I'm gonna hold on. Okay, Teddy Sumner. Teddy Sumner. Oh, the Teddy Sumner line that was but Teddy's he, out of the business, business, and but he's designing for Samad. Correct. And his line of product, which was part of McKay and Colbert. He's not only doing some of his old designs, but he's doing um, new designs for them and acting as a designer, not as a merchant. Right. He's retired. He's retired from the merchant. And, and that's what you're seeing in the upper left-hand side from the Caspian collection, which was very popular. Um, so here we have the Mystique collection. Um, it is uh, hand knotted in India, transitional. It's wool. Here's some colorways. This one, I, I'm going to tell you, Definitely the picture is not doing it justice. That rich hue of those yellowy oranges, the blues were really coming through. Here you have the Caspian collection, which was, again, those colors that were very popular throughout market. And what I like about comparing the Mystique and the Caspian collection is they actually are very similar colors, but very different design. Um, then we have the um, Mod Reserve, which is, it's wool and silk, very modern. Um, this is actually really cool. It did not, in my mind, show up. The Nordic collection. I was blown away. So we actually had this great conversation because David was saying, he's like, oh, but it's so simple. And I said, no, 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 David, stop. We can't even use that word in this discussion with the Nordic collection. And the reason being is it's wool, it's hand knotted, it's modern. But it does look simple if you look in the bottom left, you're seeing that white and that gray. But when you get close in, there's in between that white, there's this, you get like this little bit of brown or this little bit of gray. And so, yes, it's simple in the sense that when you look at it in the room, you it's a, it's 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 a, like a solid, I want to say solid, but not solid. It's, it's neutral, but it is so more than neutral. It pops. I mean, if you look at the one on the wall on the left-hand side, I mean, that's on the wall. Imagine that on your floor, you know, like it, it, it just from a different angle, it would change it just a little bit. And then you have it again on your, on your right side. And this is actually one of the bigger patterns that are with more of that black, but it, it, from a distance, it really, it doesn't really see it. It, it's pure hand spun wool. Um, and it's a very modern spin on the traditional rug making. And I have to tell you, um, this geometric design with the, was amazing. And it, it was a really great way for me to end market uh, and talking to David. He's very enthusiastic about his rugs. Um, they're, each of them are very unique. And I will say what I also loved about it was um, he talks about it. We talked a lot about like, look at the back of the rug. I, the conversation with him was amazing. Um, I really wish I- One thing about hand spun wool is that you get a variation in the tightness of the yarn. So some places the yarn is spun tighter um, than others, and some places it's spun looser. And that actually, although you dye it the same, it takes the dye stuff differently. And when you weave it, you know, you're, you're using linear structures of yarn. So some places it's tightly spun and some places it's loosely spun and nobody has any control over it. And so you get very, very subtle differences in shade of color. Uh, even though they're all the same color, the way it handles light in a room and a setting is very different. So it, it becomes a lot more complex visually than it actually is in material. Okay, so the end of recap, this is the end, is um, HRI and Samad rugs. What I am going to add in, um, I know we spent a little over an hour and I did rush through. Um, I just so you know, you just looked at over 100 rugs in 14 companies. I missed maybe a half a dozen companies that were attending market. And then there were quite a few who did not attend this market. Um, one of them I actually do want to point out, point them out was um, 
Togar rugs who do Turkish rugs. Um, they were not at market for the first time in 35 years. Their daughter is a very good friend of mine. But what I found very interesting, they chose not to come for, because of the pandemic and for traveling, but they have a, over 10,000 Turkish rugs. Tunch was in Turkey and got stuck there during the lockdowns of Turkey and then flying and home. And had nothing better to do than buy rugs. And had nothing better to do than buy rugs. I, they have now in stock over 10,000 Turkish rugs. Um, and they are offering, instead of going to market at your convenience, to come visit them in Asheville, North Carolina with a two-night hotel stay. So they've come up with a creative solution to try to handle it. Also, I will tell you that Darren and Trevor, Darren's the daughter of Tunch Togar, they are doing an amazing job of photographing. Um, and so you can, without even going to them, you can call them up and have them show. So I just wanted to point it out that they, there's a lot of creative ways going on right now about how to show rugs. And one of the things that I, I really did learn and um, which I talked about in the beginning, I'm gonna take it off the share and hold on. Okay, so one of the things I just quickly wanna do is I wanna show th this gizmo again. And I'm not, I'm definitely not marketing it, but I am the DJI, these handheld gizmos, um, I have it off. It has an app, but the reason why I want to show some stuff like this is that walking around with your camera to do this, if you're in your showroom or something, it it, it moves. This a, a equipment like this helps stabilize it. They're about a hundred bucks. You hold on to it. It also has a tripod. So if you're going to have to work with your clients, this is a great option. And the reason I'm saying that is because right now we don't know where the fall is going to come go. Um, the other thing I want to do is just to remind you, okay, the one thing I want to say is that High Point Market did an, did an amazing job of dealing with the pandemic and having people there. I definitely was nervous about going. Um, I'm still under a quarantine. Gives me more, in New York State, I, it gives me a lot more time to finish those videos. Um, please check our Facebook page, Rug News and Design and our Instagram page and our website, because over the upcoming days and weeks, I'm gonna take all those videos that I took and pictures and format them better. Um, it was my first time really doing the video and being the multi-task -per person. So just give me some time and space. If you have questions about something you saw, email me. Now I know my father has something to say. Okay, Rug News and Design. We have 4,000 posts online at our rugnewsanddesign.com and a um, number of videos, number of stories, number of back issues. What I'm saying to you is we've never been forced to really think of it except as an adjunct to the printer version, which you can uh, ask for, but we're having to reorganize our whole way of thinking to make that the dominant part of our communications media. Rug News and Design is known for its content. We're known for knowing the rug business and it's all there. So you just do a lot of keyword searches and you can find out more stuff than you ever wanted to know. And worse, and if you don't find it, um, please email, email us. Now there is one question that came in <laughs> from George Lynch, have had a problem with viscose being easily stained. Is that what you're ah, seeing with today's viscose? No. Viscose is cellulose. Viscose, when it gets wet, will stain. It's inherent in the beast. Cotton is also uh, a cellulose. Um, jute, um, sisal, they're all cellulosic fi fibers and all of those stain. One of our advertisers, Ravita Rugs, can stain protect um, uh, cellulose. They can also, for many cases, not all, take the stain out of viscose. In fact, one of their mottos is, we love viscose. So if you go online, find a copy of the magazine um, and download a recent copy, uh, I don't know which issues, they're not in every issue, um, you'll find an ad for Revita rugs or just look them up on the web. Um, they can. Um, okay. Well, okay. So Revita Rugs, look into it. Um, we're getting the signal from okay. Kim that is 120. Um, please, I apologize for going over. Um, thank you, Kim and IMC and Design on High Point Market for having us. Um, 
We loved it. And we look to talking to you guys again about other things about rugs because there's a lot that we can talk about. Have a great market and email us with any questions or the companies that we talked about. Thank you.